What is going on everyone, it's Justin here, and today I'm gonna give you guys an unboxing, show you guys what's inside, as well as kind of the experience of it, as well as a walkthrough and setup of this brand new phone from Samsung, the S20 Ultra. So with a number of new features, a lot of times out of the box, when you turn on your phone and set it up, they might not be enabled. So I'm gonna go in and show you how to enable 120 hertz, which setting you should use, as well as how to use the 8K camera and change the resolution of that, just to make the most of a smartphone that you paid $1,400 and up for if you live in the US. If you guys are trying to decide between the S20, the S20 Plus, or the S20 Ultra though, I did a video kind of giving a hands-on an overview of all of the specs and how they compare it in the lineup to help you make your decision. So I'm gonna drop that link down below. And if you guys wanna see me do like a camera test, a comparison, as well as a review of this phone, make sure you subscribe to the channel, have notifications on, and drop a like on this video. Just to summarize though, this phone is an absolute spec beast. Samsung literally threw everything into this device, both in terms of size, the specs, the number of cameras, and the megapixels. Looking at the box though, the experience is actually very similar to the previous generations. Nothing too crazy here, you just got the logo right here. It also says 5G Ultra S20 and everything because this is a 5G smartphone. So let's just go ahead and get started here and open up the box of the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. So we're just gonna open this up, take a look at some of the contents inside, and also talk about some of the accessories that you can add to this phone. Give you a rundown of some of the features before we move on to the setup process where I show you how to enable some of the main features and selling points of this phone. So as you can see, I've got the gray model here, and after going hands-on with some of these devices a few weeks ago with Samsung, I have to say the gray one is by far my favorite. In some settings, it looks like a dark gray with a bit of a blue tint to it, but in other lighting situations, it has like a nice flat light gray to it. As for the charger that you're gonna find inside the box, it comes with a 25 watt brick, and you also can charge up to 45 watts, but that is gonna cost you $50, so I'm gonna try to leave a link to a cheaper alternative down below. Other than that, you've got your USB Type-C cable, and for some reason mine is a black cable with a white power brick, but it doesn't really matter, I guess. And last but not least, you've got your AKG earbuds, which from my experience actually sound pretty decent, but I don't really think they're worth the $99 retail price that they claim. But I guess at this price point, it's still nice to have a solid pair of included earbuds that plug right into USB Type-C. But now it's time to boot this thing up for the very first time, and as you guys might notice, there isn't a button on the side dedicated to Bixby or something that you probably did program to something else, but we will show you how to customize the functionality of a double press or hold on the main power button. The first thing you're greeted with in the setup process is the language. Set your country, your language, your keyboards, and everything. And moving on from here, you have the option to migrate all your data from an old device, whether it is another Android, a Samsung, or even an iPhone. It is called Samsung Smart Switch, and in my case, I'm just going to be downloading all my apps manually. The next step is to pick your security option and there is facial recognition as well as a fingerprint or just a simple passcode. For those who are wondering, this does have face unlock but it definitely isn't as secure as something like Face ID because it doesn't have any sensors on the front aside from its front facing camera. The fingerprint sensor is going to be your best bet in terms of biometrics and in terms of the sensor that is actually built in, it is the same first generation ultrasonic one that you find on the S10 and S10 Plus. Aside from software updates, there aren't any hardware improvements that improve the speed of the fingerprint sensor, but from my experience with Samsung devices including the Note as well as the S10, it was already pretty fast and decent, but could definitely be improved when compared to others. So now that the initial setup is complete, we're going to head right into the settings and customize this phone as well as some of the major features that you might want to try out. In my case, I've set the phone to dark mode and as you can see in this menu, there is so many options for the display, whether it is a zoom, the timeout, the resolution, as well as the refresh rate. I think the first thing is to decide what screen resolution you want to use this phone in, whether it is in the Full HD+, Plus, which is native, or the full resolution of 3200 by 1440 at the 20 to 9 aspect ratio. I also usually have the blue light filter on when I'm using the phone at night because with such a bright display, especially if you're going to sleep, you kind of just want to have it set to night mode. It also does give you the option to use the phone in vivid or natural and adjust the white balance or color temperature of it, and in my opinion, I feel like the vivid obviously showcases the AMOLED display at its best, but if you're someone who needs like more true-to-life colors, say you're editing photo or video for social media on your device, then you might want to try the natural mode. One of the biggest features of this brand new phone though, and probably what a lot of people paid for, is the 120Hz refresh rate on this display. Standard refresh rate is going to be 60Hz just like most smartphones that have been out in the past few years, but if you want to take advantage of the full 120Hz, you can only use the display at Full HD+. 
This is a safe battery, and I will say the Full HD Plus still looks excellent, and I feel like the 120Hz refresh rate is worth it just from initial use. It just makes the phone feel so much smoother and faster, and even just in the UI you can see it, but I do almost wish by default this phone was able to operate in a 90Hz refresh rate at its full resolution. The next thing we're going to navigate to is probably the biggest feature of this smartphone and that is the camera settings. You've got the 108 megapixel main sensor as well as a 12 and a 48 as well as a 40 on the front so this is a spec monster especially in this category. This is also one of the first phones to be able to record 8K video and although most people don't really even shoot in 4K from what I've seen, by default the phone is set to 1080p so even if you want to adjust to like 4K or 8K you do want to make sure you go into the settings and change that. Just a reference though in terms of storage, 1 minute of 8K takes up 600 megabytes of storage and it records in 5 minute clips at a time and it splits it into 4 gigabyte files on your memory card. Compared to 4K30, that takes up about 200 to 350 megabytes of space so unless you really need to, I feel like 8K is not exactly the easiest to manage. By default though, this phone is also set to shoot at 1080p on the front facing camera so if you want to adjust this to the full resolution of 4K, just go ahead and navigate to the shooting mode and change that. Other than that though, for the most part, I've left most of the features default including HDR and also the grid lines. And the only other thing I really want to point out is that the super steady mode on Samsung devices is impressive but it does limit you to recording at 1080p. The other thing that you may want to play around with is the power mode because despite the phone having a 5000 mAh battery, it's got a high resolution 6.9 inch display, 120 hertz, you've got the multiple cameras and just everything in general of this device can take up a lot of power. So by having a default mode that you set to save some power including turning off 5G, turning off the always on display, limiting the CPU power which is still very capable, adjusting the resolution of the display and lowering the brightness can all contribute to saving the battery life and getting the maximum out of it. The last thing that I would do in the setup process though is customizing the side key. So just go ahead and navigate to the side key options and in my case I'm going to be turning off everything to do with Bixby. By default the double press is set to quick launch the camera which is something that I like. You want to just be able to quickly take a photo but when you press and hold instead of waking up Bixby you can have it show the power off menu like a normal phone. But otherwise that is just about it for what I would do in terms of setting up my Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra phone right out of the box. Another thing that you may want to pick up right away to protect your phone from scratches is a dbrand skin. They make it in many customized colors for many devices out there and you can just go ahead and check out the textures in the customizer on their website. I'm going to drop a link to that down below. So otherwise I really hope you guys enjoyed this unboxing first look as well as a bit of a setup process of the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra and this is very likely going to be Samsung's kind of leading smartphone until the end of the year when the Note line comes out. And I have to say the specs are insane, but with phones being very competitive at this price point nowadays and the premium line, the Pro, the Ultra, and all those names that kind of get thrown around, I'm very excited to see how this phone will compare to the likes of Apple as well as Huawei. As always, if you guys enjoyed it, make sure you drop a like, leave a comment down below as to what you think, and I'll see you all in the next video.